The Egyptian plover is a striking and unmistakable species. This usually very tame bird is found in pairs or small groups near water. It feeds by pecking for insects. The bird is sometimes referred to as the crocodile bird for its symbiotic relationship with crocodiles. According to Herodotus, the crocodiles lie on the shore with their mouths open and a bird called Trochilus flies into the crocodile's mouth so as to feed on decaying meat lodged between the crocodile's teeth. The American avocet is known for its unique appearance, featuring a slender, upturned bill, long legs and striking black and white plumage. These birds inhabit shallow wetlands and use their slender bills to sweep through the water in a side-to-side -side motion, foraging for small invertebrates and crustaceans. Their unique bill shape is adapted for their feeding strategy. They build nests on the ground in shallow depressions, often lined with grass and other vegetation. Both males and females take part in incubating the eggs and caring for the chicks. They exhibit a somewhat unusual breeding behavior known as polyandry. In some cases, one female may mate with multiple males, and each male is involved in incubating a portion of the eggs. Oyster catchers are closely tied to coastal habitats. They nest on beaches on coastal islands and feed almost exclusively on shellfish and other marine invertebrates. In general, they use their bills to catch shellfish. As they walk across a shellfish bed, they look for a mollusk with a partially opened shell. When they find one, they jab their bill into the shell and sever the muscle that causes the shell to clamp shut. This can be dangerous, however, as they are sometimes drowned when they don't completely sever this muscle and the shell clamps down on their bill. The Eurasian curlew has a mottled brown plumage that provides excellent camouflage in its marshland and wetland habitats. Its long, Curved bill is used for probing deep into the mud and soil to extract invertebrates, especially worms and small crustaceans. These birds are highly migratory, breeding in northern Europe and Asia and migrating to coastal areas in southern hemisphere during the non-breeding season. The nest is a simple scrape in the ground, usually lined with plant material. The female incubates the eggs, and both parents are involved in the care of the chicks. The Eurasian curlew faces conservation concerns, with declining populations in some regions. Loss of suitable nesting habitat, drainage of wetlands and changes in land use practices contribute to their decline. They play a crucial role in the ecosystems they inhabit by controlling invertebrate populations. Their feeding behavior helps to maintain the health of wetland habitats. The bar-tailed godwit is a large and strongly migratory wader, which feeds on bristleworms and shellfish on coastal mudflats and estuaries. It has distinctive red breeding plumage, long legs and a long upturned bill. They breed on Arctic coasts and tundra from Scandinavia to Alaska, and overwinter on coasts in temperate and tropical regions. The status of the bar-tailed godwit is near threatened, and the population is declining. Fewer birds have been using East African estuaries since 1979, and there has been a steady decline in numbers around the Kola Peninsula, in Siberia, since 1930. The ruff is a long-necked, pot-bellied bird. This species shows marked sexual dimorphism, the male is much larger than the female, called the reeve, and has a breeding plumage that includes brightly colored head tufts, bare orange facial skin, extensive black on the breast, and the large collar of ornamental feathers that inspired this bird's English name. Three differently plumaged types of males, including a rare form that mimics the female, use a variety of strategies to obtain mating opportunities at a lek, and the colorful head and neck feathers are erected as part of the elaborate main courting display. The female has one brood per year and lays four eggs in a well-hidden ground nest, 
incubating the eggs and rearing the chicks, which are mobile soon after hatching, on her own. The rough forages in wet grassland and soft mud, probing or searching by sight for edible items. The Tahiti sandpiper is an extinct member of the large wader family Scolopacity that was endemic to Tahiti in French Polynesia until its extinction sometime before 1819. It was discovered in 1773 during Captain Cook's second voyage, when a single specimen seems to have been collected, but it became extinct in the 19th century. Only one museum specimen is known to exist, held in the Aves collection of Naturalis Biodiversity Center. Jackanas are noted for their elongated toes and toenails that allow them to spread out their weight while foraging on floating or semi-emergent aquatic vegetation. They are also among the somewhat rare groups of birds in which females are larger, and several species maintain harems of males in the breeding season with males solely responsible for incubating eggs and taking care of the chicks. The male has therefore evolved some remarkable adaptations for parental care, such as the ability to pick up and carry chicks underneath its wings. African jackanas feed on insects and other invertebrates picked from the floating vegetations or the surface of the water. Like all other jackanas, pheasant-tailed jackana have elongated toes and nails that enable them to walk on floating vegetation in shallow lakes, their preferred habitat. They may also swim or wade in water reaching their body while foraging mainly for invertebrate prey. They are found in tropical Asia from Yemen in the west to the Philippines in the east and move seasonally in parts of their range. They are the only jackanas that migrate long distances and have different non-breeding and breeding plumages. The pheasant-tailed jackana forages by swimming or by walking on aquatic vegetation. Flocks of as many as 50 to 100 can be found on a body of water, and they can become tame and habituated to human presence. Vocalizations among jackanas usually occur between mating pairs or between fathers and their young. Jackanas will emit clustered note calls, which are made of individual notes clustered together, when jackanas attack intruders in their territories. Jackanas also made calls when eggs or chicks are under threat by predators. Chicks are able to swim, dive and feed shortly after they hatch. The male will not feed the chick but lead them to food. Northern jackanas appear to be common throughout most of their range, but could become vulnerable with loss of wetlands. Sooty terns breed in colonies on rocky or coral islands. It nests in a ground scrape or hole and lays a single egg, typically in the afternoon. It feeds by picking fish from the surface in marine environments, often in large flocks, and rarely comes to land except to breed, and can stay out to sea for three to ten years. Due to the lack of oil in its feathers, it cannot float and spends that entire time on the wing. This bird is migratory and dispersive, wintering more widely through the tropical oceans. It has very marine habits compared to most terns, sooty terns are generally found inland only after severe storms. An exceptionally common bird, the sooty tern is not considered threatened. The Arctic tern has a circumpolar breeding distribution covering the Arctic and subarctic regions. It is strongly migratory, seeing two summers each year as it migrates along a convoluted route from its northern breeding grounds to the Antarctic coast for the southern summer and back again about six months later. These are by far the longest migrations known in the animal kingdom. They are long-lived birds, with many reaching 15 to 30 years of age. They eat mainly fish and small marine invertebrates. The species is abundant, with an estimated 2 million individuals. The Caspian tern is the largest tern species, with a wingspan that can reach up to 1 meter they have a global distribution, breeding in colonies on islands and coastal areas worldwide. 
They are migratory birds, moving between their breeding and non-breeding grounds. They are passivorous and plunge dive from the air to catch fish near the water's surface. They may also eat crustaceans and other aquatic prey. These birds are social and often gather in large colonies during the breeding season. They are known for their noisy calls, which they use for communication within the colony. Caspian terns have a buoyant and graceful flight. They soar and hover in the air before making spectacular plunge dives to catch their prey. The royal tern has few predators when it is mature, but before the chicks hatch or while they are chicks the tern is threatened by humans, other animals, and the tides. Humans threaten terns by fishing and by disrupting the tern nesting sites. Fishing nets can catch a tern while it is diving, making it unable to feed or it may cause it to drown if it is caught underwater. Animals such as foxes, raccoons, and large gulls prey on tern chicks and tern eggs. Tern nesting sites can also be affected by the tides, if a tern colony has nested too close to the high tide mark, a spring tide would flood the nesting site and kill the chicks and make unhatched eggs infertile. A tern was documented with a wing broken in three places near the launch site of the recent SpaceX Starship. A local vet at the zoo calls this a common injury. The bird was found 53 hours after the launch hurled concrete and rocks into the area. The black-tailed gull feeds mainly on small fish, mollusks, crustaceans, and carrion. The species often follows ships and commercial fishing fleets. It also steals food from other seabirds. Gulls are typically medium to large in size, usually gray or white, often with black markings on the head or wings. They typically have harsh wailing or squawking calls, stout, longish bills, and webbed feet. Most gulls are ground-nesting carnivores which take live food or scavenge opportunistically, particularly the Larue species. Live food often includes crustaceans, mollusks, fish and small birds. Gulls have unhinging jaws which allow them to consume large prey. European herring gull flocks have a loose pecking order, based on size, aggressiveness and physical strength. Adult males are usually dominant over females and juveniles in feeding and boundary disputes, while adult females are typically dominant when selecting their nesting sites. It has long been believed to have extremely keen vision in daylight and night vision equal or superior to that of humans, however, this species is also capable of seeing ultraviolet light. This gull also appears to have excellent hearing and a sense of taste that is particularly responsive to salt and acidity. Where not persecuted, herring gulls can become tame in the presence of humans, and may live in proximity to certain humans they learn to trust, and may occasionally enter buildings to receive or steal food. The laughing gull has a distinctive appearance with a black head, white eye crescents and a medium-sized, slender bill. The name comes from its distinctive vocalizations, which sound like a high-pitched laugh. They are known for their noisy and raucous calls, especially in colonies during the breeding season. Both male and female participate in incubating the eggs and caring for the chicks. They are protective parents and may engage in distraction displays to deter potential threats. They are highly adaptable and can be found in urban environments, including coastal cities and beach resorts. They are known for scavenging for food scraps and are sometimes considered pests in these areas. Black skimmers have long wings and a unique bill with the lower mandible longer than the upper one, which they use for skimming the water's surface. One of their most distinctive features is their feeding behavior. They fly low over the water, with their bills open, and use their longer lower mandible to skim the surface. When they detect a fish, they quickly close their bill to catch it. They are social birds, often seen in flocks. They may form large colonies for breeding, and their colonies can include other seabird species like terns. They are generally quiet birds, but they produce barking or yapping calls during the breeding season and in colony situations. They are known for nesting and being active during the night. 
This behavior is thought to be a strategy to avoid daytime heat and reduce predation risks. The black tern is characterized by its black plumage, a black cap on its head and silver-gray wings. They feed by hovering over the water and diving to catch small fish. They are long-distance migrants, and their migration routes can cover thousands of kilometers the global population of black terns is considered to be of least concern on the International Union for Conservation of Nature. However, specific populations may face threats from habitat loss, water pollution, and disturbance. During the breeding season, black terns can display aggressive behaviors within colonies, defending territories and nests from intruders. Long-tailed Jaeger is unmistakable as an adult, with gray back, dark primary wing feathers without a white flash, black cap and very long tail. They are slimmer, longer-winged and more turn-like than that species, but show the same wide range of plumage variation. It is a migrant, wintering in the South Atlantic and Pacific. They nest on dry tundra or higher fells laying two spotted olive-brown eggs. On the breeding grounds they can be heard making yelping and rattling sounds. Outside of the breeding season they spend most of their time over open ocean. This bird feeds on fish, smaller birds, food scraps, small mammals, fruit and carrion. On migration, long-tailed Jaegers are more likely to catch their own food, and less likely to steal from gulls and terns than larger species. Great skua eat mainly fish, birds, eggs, carrion, small mammals and occasionally berries. They have been known to prey on lambs, and even pony foals. Probably their most prolific food source is bycatch abandoned by fishing vessels. Like most other skua species, it continues this piratical behavior throughout the year, showing less agility and more brute force than the smaller skuas when it harasses its victims. Due to its size, aggressive nature and fierce defense of its nest, the great skua has little to fear from other predators. An aerial apex predator, the great skua is an aggressive pirate of the seas, deliberately harassing birds as large as gannets to steal a free meal. It also readily kills and eats smaller birds such as puffins. Great skuas show little to no fear of humans, anybody getting close to the nest will be repeatedly dive-bombed by the angry adults. The great auk was an 85 cm tall flightless alcid seabird. Although very penguin-like in form, this is purely due to convergent evolution, its closest living relative is the flighted razorbill. Originally found in cold coastal waters around the North Atlantic, it only ventured onto land to breed once a year. It was hunted by humans for its feathers, eggs, meat, fat and oil and nearly all of the nesting colonies on the European side of the Atlantic had been exterminated by the mid-1500s. The increasing rarity of the great auk made specimens of the bird and its eggs highly prized, and the species' demise was accelerated further by the rush to obtain them for collectors and museums. The last great auk seen in Great Britain was caught alive in Scotland in 1844, and was then beaten to death with sticks because its captors believed it was a witch that had caused a large storm. Around the same time, the last known breeding pair of great auks on the island of Eldi, off Iceland, were strangled to fulfill a specimen order from a merchant. Common myrrh spends most of its time at sea, only coming to land to breed on rocky cliff shores or islands. They are fast in direct flight but are not very agile. They can maneuver better underwater, where they typically dive to depths of 30 to 60 meters they breed in colonies at high densities. Nesting pairs may be in bodily contact with their neighbors. They make no nest, their single egg is incubated on a bare rock ledge on a cliff face. Some 20 days after hatching the chick leaves its nesting ledge and heads for the sea, unable to fly but gliding for some distance with fluttering wings, accompanied by its male parent. 
Males spend more time diving, and dive more deeply than females during this time. Chicks are capable of diving as soon as they hit the water. Some populations have short migration distances, instead remaining close to the breeding site year-round. Tufted puffins have distinctive black plumage with a white face and a tuft of yellow feathers extending backward from their eyes. During the breeding season, their bills become brightly colored, with a mix of orange, yellow and blue. Breeding colonies are typically found on offshore islands, sea cliffs, and coastal rocks. They nest in burrows in the soil or among rocks. They are skilled divers and primarily feed on fish, squid and other small marine creatures. They catch prey by diving from the surface and using their wings for propulsion underwater. While tufted puffins are agile flyers, their takeoff from the water may require a running start, as their body shape is adapted for underwater rather than aerial propulsion. They are known for their longevity, with some individuals reaching 20 years or more. The tufted puffin is generally considered to be of least concern. However, certain populations may face localized threats, such as changes in prey availability and human disturbance. Although it has a large population and a wide range, Atlantic puffin has declined rapidly, at least in parts of its range, resulting in it being rated as vulnerable. On land, it has the typical upright stance of an auk. At sea, it swims on the surface and feeds on small fish and crabs, which it catches by diving underwater, using its wings for propulsion. It molts while at sea in the winter, and some of the brightly colored facial characteristics are lost, with color returning during the spring. The external appearances of the adult male and female are identical, though the male is usually slightly larger. Colonies are mostly on islands with no terrestrial predators, but adult birds and newly fledged chicks are at risk of attacks from the air by gulls and skuas. The puffin's striking appearance, large, colorful bill, waddling gait and behavior have given rise to nicknames such as Clown of the Sea. It is the official bird of the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Urgilornis, a 1-5 meters tall bird from the early Oligocene of Mongolia. Closely related to modern cranes, it was part of an extinct group called Eogruids, flightless birds which existed across Eurasia for a large portion of the Cenozoic. Although the earliest known Eogruids were smaller and less specialized, and may even have still been somewhat capable of flying, later forms like Urgilornis had highly reduced wings, long legs adapted for running, and convergently ostrich-like feet with only two toes each. The Adzebils were another odd group of big flightless birds whose had large downward curving beaks, short strong legs and highly reduced wings that were smaller proportionally than those of the dodo. They were less common than the moa, found only the drier forested parts of the lowlands, and based on isotope analysis of their bones they seem to have been predators hunting invertebrates, reptiles, and smaller birds, however, some think they ate fruits and nuts. The ancestors of the Maori people arrived in New Zealand around the year 1300, and sadly within about a century a combination of human hunting pressure and predation by introduced mammals sent adzebils into total extinction. The South Island Takahe is a robust and brightly colored bird with a distinctive appearance. It has deep blue and green plumage, a red frontal shield on its forehead, and a stout red bill. Historically, it was found throughout the South Island of New Zealand. However, due to habitat loss and predation, the wild population is now limited to a few isolated locations. It is flightless, and its wings are relatively small compared to its body size. However, it is a strong runner and can cover large distances on foot. Once believed to be extinct, it was rediscovered in 1948 in the Murchison Mountains of Fjordland. 
This rediscovery sparked conservation initiatives to protect and preserve the remaining population. South Island Takahe can live for an extended period, with some individuals reaching over 20 years of age in captivity. Okinawa Rail's existence was only confirmed in 1978 and it was formally described in 1981 although unidentified rails had been recorded on the island since at least 1973 and local stories of a bird known as the Agachi Kamira may refer to this species. It is a medium-sized and almost flightless rail with short wings and tail, olive-brown upperparts, black underparts with white bars and a red bill and legs. It occurs in subtropical moist forests and in neighboring habitats. It nests and feeds on the ground but usually roosts in trees. It is classified as an endangered species and is threatened by habitat loss and introduced predators. Due to their tendencies towards lightlessness, many island species have been unable to cope with introduced species. The rails have suffered disproportionately from human changes to the environment, and an estimated several hundred species of island rails have become extinct because of this. Several island species of rails remain endangered and conservation organizations and governments continue to work to prevent their extinction. The most dramatic human-caused extinctions occurred in the Pacific Ocean as people colonized the islands of Melanesia, Polynesia, and Micronesia, during which an estimated 750 to 1,800 species of birds became extinct, half of which were rails. The gray-crowned crane has a breeding display involving dancing, bowing, and jumping. It has a booming call which involves inflation of the red gular sac. It also makes a honking sound quite different from the trumpeting of other crane species. Both sexes dance, and immature birds join the adults. Dancing is an integral part of courtship, but also may be done at any time of the year. Although it remains common over some of its range, it faces threats to its habitat due to drainage, overgrazing, and pesticide pollution. Their global population is estimated to be between 58,000 and 77,000 individuals. Demoiselle cranes have to take one of the toughest migrations in the world. In late August through September, they gather in flocks of up to 400 individuals and prepare for their flight to their winter range. During their migratory flight south, demoiselles fly like all cranes, with their head and neck straight forward and their feet and legs straight behind, reaching altitudes of 500 to 800 meters along their arduous journey they have to cross the Himalayan mountains to get to their overwintering grounds in India. Many die from fatigue, hunger, and predation from golden eagles. However, their presently preferred route has been hardwired by countless cycles of migration. At their wintering grounds, demoiselles have been observed flocking with common cranes, their combined totals reaching up to 20,000 individuals. Demoiselles maintain separate social groups within the larger flock. In March and April, they begin their long spring journey back to their northern nesting grounds. Sandhill cranes are fairly social birds that usually live in pairs or family groups through the year. During migration and winter, unrelated cranes come together to form survival groups that forage and roost together. Such groups often congregate at migration and winter sites, sometimes in the thousands. As a conspicuous ground-dwelling species, sandhill cranes are at risk from a few predators. Corvids, gulls, raptors and mammals feed on young cranes and eggs. Sandhill cranes are mainly herbivorous, but eat various types of food, depending on availability. They often feed with their bills down to the ground as they root around for seeds and other foods, in shallow wetlands with vegetation or various upland habitats. Waste corn is useful to cranes preparing for migration, providing them with nutrients for the long journey. The whooping crane is an endangered crane species, native to North America, named for its whooping calls. Along with the sandhill crane, it is one of only two crane species native to North America, and it is also the tallest North American bird species. 
its lifespan is estimated to be 24 years in the wild. After being pushed to the brink of extinction, due to unregulated hunting and loss of habitat, and just 21 wild cranes remaining by 1941, conservation efforts would lead to a partial recovery. The total number of cranes in the surviving migratory population, plus three reintroduced flocks and in captivity, only slightly exceeds 800 birds as of 2020. These birds forage while walking in shallow water or in fields, sometimes probing with their bills. They are omnivorous but tend to be more inclined to animal material than most other cranes. Only the red-crowned crane may have a more carnivorous diet among living cranes. Red-crowned crane is a large East Asian crane among the rarest cranes in the world. In some parts of its range, it is known as a symbol of luck, longevity, and fidelity. They typically forage by keeping their heads close to the ground, jabbing their beaks into mud when they encounter something edible. When capturing fish or other slippery prey, they strike rapidly by extending their necks outward, a feeding style similar to that of the heron. Flock sizes are affected by the small numbers of the red-crowned crane, and given their largely carnivorous diet, some feeding dispersal is needed in natural conditions. It is monogamous and long-lived, with stable pair bonding both within and between years, and believed to mate for life. Both sexes incubate the eggs for at least 30 days. They also both feed the young when they hatch. Staying in the nest for the first few weeks, the young start to follow their parents as they forage in marshes by around three months of age.